welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Brandon Johnson and Brian Mitchell will be sharing their experiences with Apple's AirPods. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO15. So, a few weeks ago, I bought the AirPods on launch day. They came a few days later. Yet a day before shipping time, so that was always a, a nice bonus. So my kind of introduction to Bluetooth headphones was when, I guess, I, you know, Bluetooth headphones have been out for a little while, but when the rumors of the next iPhone, now the iPhone 7, started to come out saying that they would not have a headphone port, I started shopping around, and in April I bought a pair of Bluetooth headphones, which we'll kind of discuss later just to, to start getting used to Bluetooth with the anticipation that I would use them for the iPhone 7. Then Apple announced that they were going to be making the AirPods, and whew, they look nice, so I just had to buy them. So, Brandon, what, were you, what, are, your, uh, what are your impressions with how these look? So I uh, don't actually own AirPods myself, but a number of my coworkers actually ended up purchasing them also on launch day, uh, or shortly thereafter, and I had the chance to try a pair of AirPods uh, and also one alone, as we'll talk about later, because that's kind of a neat little interaction as well. But a couple of the things that kind of surprised me when I looked at them is just how small the case is, or not necessarily small, but just like how um, sized almost like perfectly for for carrying those two uh, earbuds themselves. And we actually, I compared them to AirPods that I had, and they looked relatively, you know, pretty close to on the same scale. So the design itself almost looks like you just hacked off the cable on Air- AirPods uh, or EarPods, the the wired EarPods that came with, for example, my iPhone Seven. Now I've also got some earbuds, some wireless Bluetooth earbuds that I purchased about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago. Um, we'll talk about these, of course, later. Before, um, as, as 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 you mentioned before, uh, mine are the uh, Anchor Sound Buds, which are definitely an athletic style headphone so it's interesting to see how like these these are definitely not like uh, they don't have the wire that goes kind of back behind your head connecting the two earbuds and that's one of the things that i find really enticing about apple's kind of entry into that market because they're they're definitely still earbuds but they lost the the connecting cable they're not neck buds right like we've seen so much about at ces from lg neck and buds. others I like neck that. buds right there it's it's all, they, those have always been kind of such a strange kind of uh, a strange design in my estimation the neck buds right because there's this big honking thing that sits around your neck and it seems like that might get uncomfortable over time but some people really like them my, my first impressions when seeing them is wow they're small I don't know I mean it makes sense they're not very big you know they're the size of an ear pod and yeah, so yeah exactly it's just the, the case is small and I was, I'm I'm used to my I have the Soul Republic Shadow Wireless in ear headphones and those have this big loop and they're they're big they don't really fold up and so this just like oh, it's so small like it's it's smaller than the the ear pod case that came with the non lightning ear pods you kind of right. like roll it up exactly and I, I would always use that in my pocket so these are smaller than that but with so many more feet you know it, it charges them at the same time um, exactly it, and it looks a lot like a canister or a case of dental floss exactly. Uh, I don't know if I could find it, but uh, there was a tweet I saw who someone like took the sticker off of a Glide <laughs> dental flask case and put it on their AirPods saying, you know, <laughs> to deter thieves or something. <laughs> That's awesome. So the headphones themselves look like um, an EarPod. Now the, the kind of the stem on them is a touch wider than on an EarPod. So that yeah, yeah, is yeah. going to accommodate the battery. Now, I, apparently these things are loaded with glue iFixit did a teardown of them and concluded that they are, I think it probably got a zero or a one on the repair repairability scale. Oh no. They're not meant, they're like the Apple Pencil. They're not meant to be taken apart. They're loaded with glue to keep it all together. Yeah, yeah. But aside from the glue, I think they're built very well and seem to be just flawless for me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely the sort of thing where everything seems pretty much seamless. And I mean that both both figuratively and literally like the 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 devices themselves are just super smooth and well built agreed to start the seamlessness 
uh, when you first set it up, you you literally just open it, you take it out of the box, you have your your iPhone sitting there, and it's open the top of the AirPod case, and the this drawer came out from uh, kind of below the screen, saying, "Would you like to pair?" So I said yeah. yes, and then bam, it was set up. So easy. And then now if I go to any of my computers that are signed with iCloud, I can uh, go to the Bluetooth menu and find my, I've called mine Brer Pods in my yes. my uh, common naming of things. So I have my Bry phone and my uh, Bry Book Pro and so on and so forth. So I see my, my AirPods there and I can just select them from my Mac, my, my watch, my um, iPad, iPhone, etc. And so it just, you have to kind of manually transfer it, but it's there. You don't have to pair it. You only pair it once and it's just there. That's awesome. That is so slick. And when you, when you, when you open up these, the, the case, I, it's not completely reliable for me of when this happens, but if my phone is unlocked, I'm going to try it now. And I open the AirPod case, it does show up in the bottom and it will say the, the charge level of the AirPods and the charge level of the case. And as yeah, well as awesome. in the notification center, if it's connected under the battery section, if you have these in your ear or at least with the case open, it should say the battery level of the AirPods and case. Right on. Yeah. Like uh, bo- both of these things, the, the pairing process and uh, like the the kind of information you get back about that status or like health of the of the uh, ear pods and the, and the case or the ear pods in the case is like something that's that's totally unparalleled in in the sense of like only apple could really make that p- the pairing process so slick and because they they also control the os of, of the phone they also control the software that runs on the phone they they own the the technology stack the account management and the hardware they they are the ones to use this and i you know they're with the development of the w1 chip that Mm -hmm. lets you independently stream audio to two devices at once in time yeah with a low low power usage is i think apple is really the only company that could have pulled this off and i'm interested to see if more will come in the future or not absolutely so how do they sound? Now I know I've I've heard some uh, some things with it, but and I'm certainly not necessarily like an audiophile uh, in that I don't have that like discerning taste, I guess, uh, in the same sense. So they they sounded certainly commensurate with the wired earpods, or certainly as as good as any other Bluetooth headphone I've ever heard. Now I'll admit the uh, sound buds that I have, the Bluetooth headphones that are uh, kind of. Uh, the ones that I have that are most closely aligned with what the AirPods are meant to do actually sound much worse than the AirPods. The AirPods definitely have a, a level of sound quality or fidelity that's like at least as good or better than any wired earbuds I've ever tested. Yeah, I think I've had no issues with the audio. Um, I used earpods at work for a few weeks before I got my AirPods mm-hmm. and I didn't really notice a difference. It's a little strange because you wear a pair of wired earpods and you know they sound fine but you just kind of feel this weight and so they they get a little, little heavier in your ear. For and sure. And then the, the AirPods is kind of a light and freeing, and so things just feel a little more open. Yeah. And so I don't I don't know if that like adds a, a mental perception of audio quality or anything, but I feel like these are a little more, it's like a strange, at least when I wear them, I feel like I'm hearing, I mean, you know, when you're wearing headphones, you, you're like, I'm hearing something that no one else is. But when you have these, it's especially there because, you know, it's just kind of tucked away and you're like, I'm wearing, I'm listening to the secret thing and no one yeah. else can really see that, but it can because you have something in your ear, but it's not quite as, as obvious as if a uh, cable was also coming out of your ears. Right. Absolutely. Like an- another thing about this too, and I know maybe this doesn't have to do particularly with the way it sounds, but uh, as one of my coworker who owns a pair of AirPods as he was leaving today, he had them in because he was he was biking back and uh, biking biking back to his house. And I talked to him like like he was listening to something. And he was like, "Oh, you know, hey." Uh, and he like without skipping a beat could hear could hear me through it, right? And he he had yeah. he had turned off the music at that point. But I just it did not register with me. It looked like he was still listening, right? So I was kind of you know I like waved at him and stuff. And he's like, "Yeah, no, I can I can hear you." That so of course part of that's just me not being super perceptive but like another aspect to it too is i think like visually that cue is there almost right like that that you're listening to something that maybe nobody else can hear right or you're listening to something secret there's like a secret agent almost sort of thing uh that that comes with that kind of like the watch talking into the watch right yeah it's this tucked away thing that you're interacting with that you don't know if others can really see it because it's a Mm -hmm. kind of a newer thing that isn't such a, a norm in our current society yeah, for sure. Now, I think, you know, the ear, like the earpods, the earpods are kind of designed to be very open. So it, they're not really in-ear, they're not noise canceling or anything. So you're going to hear your sounds from your environment, which I, I really like when walking outside or something and working at, at work. Yeah, absolutely. 
the the times that they're not really helpful are when you're in a loud environment and you really need to hear something and only that that one thing you're listening to like an airplane or if you're doing maybe more audio work mixing or mastering something yeah that makes sense that you'd want to use something a little bit more closed for those purposes but for at work i think it's good i can still kind of hear around me and if someone's talking about something that's interesting i can pull out and like chip into their conversation or if someone's trying to talk to me i can hear them that's awesome yeah now we can start talking about some more of the features. So if you yeah. if you do hear someone talking to you through this spin back, you could say, of the AirPods, you can just pull one out and it'll stop your music. So there's two infrared sensors on each of these, on each of the AirPods. So it'll detect when it's in and not in your ear. And if it detects that it's been removed, it will pause your audio. That's really handy for just, you know, if I want to go run to the bathroom or something, I just pull them out, set them on my desk, and then lock my computer and go. You know, it's paused. And I come back, put them back in. You only have to hit play again because it's kind of lost the Bluetooth connection. But right. if it's within a relatively short amount of time, the AirPod back in and it just resumes. And that's super, super handy. I really Absolutely. like that feature. I think it's very smart. And you can just listen on one AirPod. If you have both in, take it out, take one out, pause, but you can go back to your device and hit play and it'll continue in just the one. So it'll know the infrared sensors aren't covered, then it'll play in that one. So you can kind of hop back and forth if you're low on battery and you want to listen for double time, I suppose. Um, And it also will allow for maybe multiple people to share a pair without being tethered at three feet apart. Right. Uh, Wire adds the limitation for I know, I think, who was it? Casey was mentioning, Casey Liss on Analog or some other podcast was talking about how he and his wife uh, were watching TV through their Apple TV because apparently you could pair these with your Apple TV. What? I didn't know that. But that apparently that's what some of the other podcasters are saying, which sounds awesome to me. So you could watch, I guess, TV through this and you can put one in, you know, share two people on a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And that sounds really, really slick. Yeah, that sounds super slick. I, yeah, like that's something that could only be done with something. So like, for lack of a better phrase, like viscerally wireless, like fundamentally wireless is like those, those AirPods, because the way that they're independent, but can play the same music, like you you almost can't even replicate that with wired earbuds. You certainly can't replicate that with wired earbuds. And then with the ability to walk around the room or their house yeah and you know pair it to something that's you know your apple tv playing a a tv show and then walk around your house cleaning or something you can totally do that and apparently the range on these is really good too i haven't really tested it but i think some it's it seems to almost be double that of a normal bluetooth connection so up to almost 60 feet that's awesome That's what i've heard many people are able to achieve that's way cool to join the infrared sensors on here there's of course a microphone on each or several probably because they're beam forming so it kind of there are diagrams of it kind of tucking the side of your face so it can pick up audio that yep. you're or pick up a voice as you're speaking and as well there's an accelerometer in them so you can kind of double tap and you can configure it to either activate siri toggle between play pause or just do nothing and so i have mine set to siri which is the default so i can do things like hello telephone ahoy telephone right that's the one <laughs> ahoy telephone and uh tell my assistant to to play a certain playlist or artist or um, skip ahead skip a song go back a song something like that or or change volume so generally when i'm going on a walk with headphones i'll be able to still feel through my um pocket of my jeans even with gloves on i can adjust the volume and so yeah. that's just easier than activating my uh my friendly neighbor in my pocket because in my ears right so it's uh, one quick aside on this so you you might get a kick out of this because so i've got an amazon echo dot now i was using for some kind of uh development stuff kind of for kicks and giggles and uh in anticipation of recording i actually muted it so that we couldn't do that thing to the Amazon virtual assistant. <laughs> uh, even, <laughs> you know, uh, even though it's not likely to say something, you know, I'd like buy something with it or something. But yeah, it's always, always a struggle to not reference the thing that you're trying to review <laughs> in that case. But it's, it, I'm, it's interesting to hear your perspective on uh, activating Siri like that because the there are very few other Bluetooth headphones or speakers that can activate Siri uh, at all or in a way that's useful. I feel like it's just like cars. Cars will do it, yeah. but no headphones have really incorporated something like a voice assistant. Yeah, like the I do have a speaker that if I push the uh, phone button, there's so I've got a Sony SRS X5. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's a really nice speaker. I'm a fan of it but pushing the cell button will actually activate Siri. Now, there are other Sony products I have that also have this cell phone button, this phone button. Um, and I think it's ostensibly supposed to be for like saying, oh, I want to pick up a call. But for some reason on this one speaker alone, not the other Sony products I have that have the same button, uh, that phone button will activate Siri. And it's super, it, w- it was super helpful. But now I have a, oh, sorry. Um, 
<laughs> there, there I go and mess it up again. But yeah, no, it's it's absolutely a unique feature of the AirPods. Um, you know, even even headphones like um, even very high end Bluetooth headphones don't have that are that are like ear encapsulating, right? From third parties, don't support activating Siri in the same way. Yeah, curious. I want to try my car now. There's a hang up and an answer button. Yeah, for phone. Because the aftermarket radio I installed in my parents' car has a voice act- or voice activation button, and that was fantastic. I could, you know, rate a song or skip to a different playlist. Now I have to awkwardly use my watch, which is not fun to do while driving. No, for sure. You have to talk close to it and hope that it picks it up and speak it slowly. But if I'm playing music or a podcast in the car, it's going to start picking that up. And ugh. Yeah. It's bad. I tend to just shout like a goofy person. <laughs> it doesn't always work, <laughs> yep. you know, like... Uh, Ahoy Telephone, play music by Coldplay or some, something like that. And I said, sa- yeah. you know, I sound Talk like a little an, louder, a little, little yeah. more slowly. And I yeah, definitely I've, feel like I'm in like a, a 1950s newscast. <laughs> but but yeah. with with my AirPods, I'm I'm a little quieter because I'm, I'm usually by myself when I'm when I'm commanding Siri. So if I'm out going on a walk or something is when I will use Siri pretty much. That's the only time I'll use it. Uh huh. And so I'm just going to I just kind of double tap and, and say my command, you know, quietly to myself. And, and that that generally works 100 percent. But most of the time. That's awesome. Um, the double tap to activate our uh, Siri or the play pause isn't always reliable. Sometimes I have to. I do it probably too fast. I have to slow down a little bit. So that's a little bit of a hit or miss. Right, right. So my the the over your uh, headphones that I have, the wireless over your headphones I have, also have that like tap based interface, um, and it's always kind of tricky. I've I've found that exact same thing where like if you tap too fast, or if you tap uh, in a way that it's not like expecting, it sometimes can have unexpected results. Uh, or it won't do anything at all. Like the so, for example, I can tap on the side of my headphones to to pause music. Um, okay. Which also is not like it's not like a super intuitive thing. So I know uh, when a friend of mine was trying out these headphones, they pressed there they they tap the they tap the side just out of like habit, just to like tap the side, and the music stopped. And they were oh, like, no. Oh no, what happened? Yeah, right. But it's like no, that's it's a control. Sometimes like to tap the music or fidget around with what's on your head and exactly yeah. and that's like a totally reasonable thing to do but that it's it's a it's an interface right and it's supposed to be an interface that that will be out of the way and you don't need to like interact with it if you don't want to but it didn't account for that that thing or it did but you just have to use the opposite side of the headphones so it's it's interesting to to see like it seems a little bit more intuitive almost in that case because like um with something that wraps around your entire head it kind of makes sense to fidget with it a little bit more but that it's great to hear that it's maybe a little bit more precise than <laughs> than the ones that I've I've seen implemented by other companies. Yeah, and I have made a few phone calls on them as well. Oh yeah, um, I've had I don't I should look into this more, but I've had some issues with my iPhone Seven and uh-huh. the microphone of it picking up, but then not. Uh, in two cases, I've had it where I'm on a call and it will just not. No one can hear me, and they end up hanging up because they can't hear me. Oh no! So I've used my AirPods a couple times just if I'm having problems or if it's more convenient, or if I was wearing them already, I'll just continue to use them. Yeah. And last week I was on a walk and I had a phone call with a friend just to talk because we were we hadn't talked in a while, so I'm like, oh. I'm about to go on a walk. Let's just walk and talk at the same time. And yeah. so I think it picked up some of the wind, but it worked very well. Came home and listened to or and talked for a little while longer. So it was probably like two hours in the AirPods. Yeah. Then one of them died, and then it seamlessly continued on with the other one. I'm assuming use just one microphone in the right AirPod. Yeah. Seem to be my case. And then because the right one died first, then the left one continued to go on. Interesting. Yeah. Now there was there there was a low power beep. I wasn't really sure what it was. I thought it was because he was using Google Voice right. to, to call me on my plain normal AT&T cell phone number. Yeah. And so it was kind of, I was beep and I wasn't sure what was what it was, but it was apparently a low battery sound and I hadn't gotten to that point before. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So it's almost like the battery wear might occur disproportionately if you're, if you're using the microphone a lot because it might yeah. be relying on just the right AirPod in that case. Yeah, now they both do have microphones, and yeah. I want to say it does kind of, it probably records some on both sides, but I don't know why. I'm not sure. Because gotcha. I've only really used them together. So, shall we compare our old Bluetooth headphones or earbuds to the AirPods, maybe? It's kind of say how our experiences have been compared to... Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, I'll, I'll preface uh, what I'm, what I'm going to say with 
again, I don't I don't own AirPods right now. Um, I actually transitioned mostly away from the earbuds that I'm about to describe to uh, to over ear headphones uh, for some very specific reasons that are mostly pertinent to just like the way that I listen to music and the way that I listen to to audio in general. Um, but the the headphones that I have that are most closely similar to the AirPods, as I mentioned, are those Anchor soundbuds. Uh, I got these. Actually, I, I, I placed the order while I was um, in Palm Springs, California uh, for, for a vacation, and I, I was running a lot, and I realized I, I wanted to listen to music while I, while I ran. And um, when I run, I don't really want to carry my phone around, so I wanted something I could pair to my watch and just run with. Uh, and these fit the bill for that. Actually, they were on like super sale. I think I got them for like 12 bucks, which was awesome. Score. Um, yeah, right? It was like St. Patrick's Day or something, right? And they were like, oh, well, if you buy the green AirPods, or sorry, if you buy the green sound buds for St. Patty's Day, we'll give you a half off. And I was like, this sounds great. I don't mind wearing something that's green. But the, the thing about these is they're very kind of, uh, they're rugged, but they're not, uh, de- design-wise, they're totally different. Right, they're totally different. It's very. It looks uh, rather inexpensive. Um, they're weatherproof, which is very nice, but they still kind of exclude a lot of sound. So I wouldn't recommend wearing them if you're like bike commuting. If if you're on like a, a cycle track or something where you're just go, you know, where you're grade separated from cars, don't often have to run into pedestrians or anything like that. Then maybe that's all right. But um, if you're zig- zigging and zagging out of traffic, I would not recommend. Uh, using these because they'll seal up your ears and it'll be difficult to hear what's going on outside you. Uh, the yeah, one... I've, I've never felt yeah. comfortable biking while um, wearing headphones or anything. I've, yeah. I've pretty much never done that. Same with like skiing or any anything really where I'm, you know, uh, going at high speeds pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Driving, I'll never use headphones. Yeah, for sure. That that always just like messes with me because like I, I can understand if you're listening to something in the car over the car stereo but like if you have something in your ears that that always to me kind of seals me off from the rest of the world um so that's i i'm not i'm not super keen on on uh on doing that in something that was like a high speed high concentration situation i will say i have biked with these in a couple times um but it was always on what's called the hardwood creek trail in uh washington county minnesota that goes uh if, if you want to take it that way it'll go all the way up to duluth i usually do uh, will do like the forest lake or or um north branch portions of that trail but it's essentially one direction um that uh it's it's you just go one way or the other you go up or down you go north or south and uh it's a very infrequently traveled trail that actually essentially never crosses roads so i I that that sounds like a time to be able to wear headphones exactly exactly so it's 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 not by no means is it like a boring route but it's like a little monotonous if you've done it before and i've i you know i bike that essentially a, a number of weekends for like the better part of 10 years so it's just kind of nice to consume consume some media along that uh and like for something like that it, those these fit pretty well but because of like the design considerations it's just in a whole other class than the airpods i feel um it's probably you know i think i got them for probably a literal tenth of the cost uh, probably slightly less than a tenth of the cost uh of of airpods and i think that my experience trying them out has shown that like that's that's in no small part because these are in an entire diff- entirely different class of uh of headphone the uh, the sound quality is certainly much better um, build and the sort of information you get in the integration with your phone is so 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 uh, much much deeper than what you get with the sound buds. You do get the battery indicator, um, but yes. that's that's you know very common now. In fact, there's only one pair of Bluetooth headphones that I have that that doesn't do that, and uh, they're slowly dying. I've had these for three years. It's actually the ones I'm speaking to you on right now. They're actually not used as Bluetooth headphones right now. They're uh, hooked into my computer with a uh, uh, patch cable, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's how I'm listening to. Sometimes it. a wire is is much better. This is true. This is true. So I'm interested to hear about your comparison because I think your the headphones that you had before this, the in ear headphones from Soul Republic, are probably closer to the same uh, sort of class here. It, like mine, they do have the kind of neck connecting portion to it, but um, other than that, quality seems to be a little bit higher. The build the build is probably more similar, and I'm bet I'm betting too that the uh, the audio quality. Yeah, these are Bluetooth 4.0. I'm I'm betting that the audio quality is probably much much more commensurate with the airpods but i could be wrong 
What did you think? Yeah, so I, I I haven't really used these since getting the AirPods, but uh-huh. the, the most initial things are, of course, you know, the Soul Republic Shadow Wireless ones have a thing around your neck. And that I never really got used to, even or especially in the fall when I had to wear a jacket or in the winter when I would walk and have like a down jacket and scarf on. Oh, it just right. kind of sat strange. And so yours has just a, a much smaller cable, so you can just kind of toss it over everything. This has, it's a little heavier. It's the battery on your neck versus in the ear, earbuds. Uh-huh. And that was something I was looking for when buying these. It was, of course, them on uh, May 1st of 2016. Uh-huh. So I'm like, summer, I want something really light in my ears. I don't want it to stick out or be really heavy. So I bought I bought something like this that kind of was heavier on the, the lower end. Aside from that, I think the Solar Republic has more bass. They're more noise. They're in ears. So they're more noise canceling. Uh-huh. And so that's a difference. And one thing I noticed with these Solar Republic ones is the lowest volume wasn't quite low enough. When I, If I was just in my house, I couldn't hear a ton around me at the lowest volume. Oh, interesting. And that was something that bothered me a bit. I, I generally, if I'm around the house, I have it pretty low. Out and about walking and things, I need to turn it up. But even at work, the lowest volume was a little louder than my comfort for being able to hear if someone wanted to talk to me or something. I just thought it wouldn't be, you know, it's better to be respectful and not have it be louder than, you know, you don't want to have someone have to tap you on your shoulder to get your attention. Right, I get you. So it was, aside from that, the audio quality is pretty similar. Maybe Solar Republic is a little better in some of the bass. The, the battery life is probably kind of comparable. Solar Republic never quite seemed to last a full eight hours. Probably act, probably more than AirPods, not uh-huh. if you include the case. The Solar Republic ones do support showing battery indication of the battery levels. However, it was kind yeah. of every 10, 20%. So it wasn't always the most accurate. And when it was when it was low, it would play in this really uh, low bit rate. Uh, battery low, charge now. And uh, when you turn it on, it plays this little din 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 din, like a little <laughs> jingle. And same when you shut it down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was just kind of a little annoying. And it's always lo- way louder than I want it to be. I see now they're uh, sixty eight dollars on Amazon. I bought them for ninety, so they're a bit cheaper nowadays. One thing I went running with with the Solar Republic a few times, and they bounce like crazy. And I felt like they're they're not really workout headphones and that's kind of what i knew going into but Mm -hmm. if i kind of tilted them the weight would be um, distributed in a way that wouldn't have them kind of bounce off as much but the airpods are nice because there's no cables pulling them down they are just in your ears so if an earpod or airpod would fit in your ear well you know that the airpods will probably be be good and fall out when you don't want them to right on i should say one more thing that the the shadow wireless support is connected to multiple devices at once i haven't tested this extensively but you can kind of connect to two and listen to listen to like music on one but like a phone call on the other or i'm not quite sure but i never really tested out but it's something they they support that the AirPods don't, and that was an interesting. Yeah, right on. Note. Right on. Yeah, I have to say the the Anchor Sound Buds they have done pretty well transitioning between devices, but they can't match what Apple's done to kind of essentially prepare devices. Um, and that's just because they control the account, you know, the the account and like identity management side of, uh, of of that equation. So they can do that really easily. The only thing I've seen that comes closer, at least that I've that I've owned that comes close, are the Bayo Play H sevens, uh, which are which are the headphones that I got recently um they're over ear um they're the ones that touch interface on the side but i can disconnect from one computer and reconnect from another one uh once everything's paired it's pretty seamless which is um just you know it's probably about the limit of what the bluetooth spec alone can give you but even then like i see my colleagues with airpods basically not even skipping a beat (laughs) right uh it's pretty great yeah like there's nothing that can beat that level of integration yeah when when apple's got iCloud based pairing, you know, that no one can really compete. <laughs> yep, that's for sure. So these are the AirPods also do work as a non or just as standard Bluetooth when they're not using the special uh, W1 Apple ways of connecting. So there's a button on the back of the case that will enter it into pairing mode. I have never tried this. Supposedly, um, you can pair them to Android devices and Windows computers and other other Bluetooth devices that support audio. And they just kind of act as a normal Bluetooth device. Um, I'm not sure if it streams to one and then daisy chains to the next one or if it connects to both at the same time. Uh-huh, but yeah. there's uh, an, an, uh, an article on Android Central that I've linked in the show notes, um, which gives a good review of the AirPods. They're, the one thing they note is that they're expensive. And uh, 160, $60, yeah, $159, they are rather expensive, but two independent earbuds is really 
worth it and I didn't hesitate to buy them. Yeah, for sure. And so this 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 article um, is basically saying that they work well on Android and they would recommend them aside from the price. The comments are kind of amusing to go through though. <laughs> A bunch for of Android sure. fans t- reading an article about Apple headphones on Android. Yeah, that's really like a testament to the engineering behind them, though, right? It's it's clear that this is a product that um, the team at Apple that created it felt really um, impelled to, to make something awesome that kind of spanned outside the product, right? The, biz- the business need kind of, uh, while it was definitely still there, was kind of alongside this other desire to make something really cool, right? And something that, that, that's just like intrinsically cool and not just like works on our thing which is a thing that I feel like Apple doesn't always get a lot of respect for. So it's great that uh, Android Central um, kind of picked that up. Yeah, I think even even though they were delayed, it was very much worth the wait. And um, the Apple did a good job, and I'm excited to use them for years to come. Right on. I've been keeping mine in my pocket pretty much 24-7 yeah. since getting them. And the case definitely has is covered in little micro scratches, as you would expect from plastic, but... Yeah. The inside is pretty clean. There's a little dust around the, the lip, but other than that, they're in good shape, and I, I like being able to carry them around with me whenever, because I d- never know when I'm going to maybe want to listen to something, or uh, have a surprise. I'm going to go on a walk, or do something, or want to focus, and listen to a podcast, or music, or whatever. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's awesome, like, the spontaneity of it. Um, whether, whether that's, like, um, just having them in your pocket, having them around, or, like, being able to take one out, um... And, and, and put one back in and just like all, all of those different things have really been engineered for spontaneity and I think that's going to be a thing that people are going to respect about this product for a long time kind of in a similar way to like the Amazon Echo ecosystem uh, is like you, you plant it in a spot in your house right and then it becomes like second nature to ask it for things right like yeah uh, i've got i've got mine on my desk and i can ask it to pair it to my speaker and it'll connect to my speaker and i can start playing my audiobook or some amazon prime music stuff like that um or i can tell it to set like reminders set timers set alarms stuff like that other other kind of things too but those are like the core things that i use it for um and i feel like this has the potential to you know not not be like a siri machine in the same way but to be that same sort of thing for music and that same sort of thing for anything you might listen to, I guess. Um, but it's with you all the time. So I think that's going to be something that's really powerful that I think you've hinted at there. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to use them for a while and I'm very happy to have them and I give it a 10 out of a 10. Two thumbs up. Awesome. Two thumbs up indeed. Well, what do you say? I think that probably just about concludes this episode of Second Opinion. Yeah, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L. That's uh, Brian Mitchell without the E and one of the L's. Uh, and you can hear me talk about my experiences in life and tech things, and maybe even a few comments about AirPods if something should come up. Well, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, my name is Brandon underscore MN. You can also hear both of us uh, on a couple of other shows on this fine podcasting network we call The Nexus including PodKit, a show about, uh, from Apple and Klein developers, and uh, also some of us do iOS development, either in our free time or, or for work as well. That, that's uh, definitely a show that we're going to focus on bringing kind of back to a more, a more frequent schedule now that we're all kind of, uh, out of out of school and in the workforce. So to the best of our abilities, we'll be able to, uh, we'll try to pull that back onto something frequent because we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about uh, absolutely certainly stuff like this in, indeed as well uh, so we'll look forward to hearing some more of your thoughts there um, you can also find me on my website which is brandon.mn uh, where i think the http cert is expired the https the tls cert is expired on that right now but <gasps> uh, how could you i know i know it's <laughs> what happens when you use let's encrypt uh, and your cron job fails. That's that's how that's how it always works, right? Other than that, you can probably see me roaming the streets of Northeast Minneapolis or the or the North Loop, um, because that's that's a cool spot to be. And I like coffee. <laughs> Yum. Yes, indeed. Other than that, I think uh, if you want to uh, hear anything particular reviewed on another episode of Second Opinion, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can either contact us at the nexus.tv uh, there's a contact page there that you can use to request things to review otherwise you can get at us on twitter uh, our twitter handle is 
something that I should know off the top of my head, which I believe is the Nexus TV. Is yep, the Nexus TV. Awesome. All right. I didn't want I didn't want to guess without um, because you know what happens when you guess. We also have a Facebook page where you can reach out. I know I'm an admin on there, and you can go to the YouTube channel, which at least Ian mon- monitors, so he will be able to help you out there. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. I think that's it. I think so. Thanks so much for listening. See you all soon. Farewell. Adios. Adios.